Welcome to the office. Mr. Ibrahim, welcome to the office. Thank you, man. Where are you coming from? I'm coming from Kuwait. Man. Why are you here? How okay. can I help you? I have no problem. Like, no like, physical no, pain. No physical pain, exactly. Okay. But I, I know I have problem because okay. I've fell down many times in my life. But never so you've had injuries. You've had injuries in, your, in the past. Yeah. Physi right. Physical traumas. Right, physical, oh. uh, exactly. Okay. Uh, and that's why I'm here. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about it. So okay. I just took a peek at your x-rays. We did your full spine x-rays. Mm -hmm. We have a few imbalances going on that we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of injuries you recall, mm -hmm. what are the most significant injuries you recall? Because I see a couple of tailbone injuries, I see a pelvic imbalance, I see stuff in your upper back. Okay. Uh, upper back would be, I use my mobile a lot, all my work on my mobile. Okay. Uh, and tailbone is, I remember, the one thing I remember is when I was in my teenage, I was skating in one of the... You're still a teenager, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then... You know, you and fell on boom, your skateboard right on my tailbone, tailbone and <clears throat> it was like I couldn't breathe okay. for like 30 seconds. Okay, and then the pain I mean, when I touched my tailbone, there was part of it I remember, but it wasn't like as it is. Like, I felt I, I lost because of like I had a very like really Did you go to hospital? Uh, no, I just no, let you just go. deal with it. Yeah. Okay. You said you're on your mobile doing your work. What do you do? What's your work in Kuwait? I work mainly on social media. Okay. I'm a media guy. Okay. I'm always with people, you know. Doing what? Lives. I serve people with well-being. Okay. Everything related to well-being, consciousness. Okay. So you're looking up information in terms of well-being exactly. and you're translating it into Arabic for the region so people there can understand different concepts of well-being exactly is that correct yes okay that makes more sense yeah okay mm -hmm. so what have you learned about Gonstead the interesting part it's simple yes from outside it's simple it's a spine and that spine must be maintained okay it must be in a certain position to get the energy and the body flowing rightly okay so I know and I know for me and for everyone that we had injuries sometime in our life, right? Right. Fell down, slipped, someone hit us, we had a fight, sometime. And so that should be uh, taken care of. Addressed. It, addressed we should address it. Exactly. The spine has two main functions. It is there to house mm. and protect. The most important part of your body, of your being, is your nervous system. Right. You have the bony casing mm -hmm. that protects the brain. Mm -hmm. You have the spinal column that protects the spinal cord. Mm -hmm. The brain sends the signal down through the spinal cord, through the foramen magnum, mm -hmm. right? It sends the signals down the spinal cord, exits out at all these various levels. Mm -hmm. We have 24 movable bones in the house, in mm -hmm. the spine. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have 33 pairs of spinal nerves that power every single function in the body directly or indirectly. That's it, kalas. Mm -hmm. Our first line of defense of, to protect the nervous system, and before I talk about this, we have to say, do we agree that the nervous system is the most important organ in the body or system? Yes. Okay, and people are going to say the heart. I know they are. Yeah. Why? You heart can shut down and you're still alive. Mm -hmm. You're not considered clinically dead until the brain activity shuts off. You can still live with an artificial heart. Mm -hmm. You can still pump the blood in the hospital. Mm -hmm. You can't live with an artificial brain, dude. You get one. So my question, what the heart is doing in the body? It's pumping the blood. 
just pumping the blood. Well, there's more to it. More I mean, pumping. we can get into yeah. the whole esoteric part of it. All right. But the main function of the heart is a pump. Okay. It's pumping the blood. We need the blood, the circulation. And now this is the real question, the chicken or the egg. Mm. You need the blood to nourish the nerves. But you need the nerves to control the heart. Right. If you take a heart cell, they're called syncytial cells. Mm. And a syncytial cell will beat sporadically about 130 beats a minute by itself. You put them in a Petri dish, they beat by themselves. But you need the coordination of those syncytial cells. It has to coordinate through the AVNSA nodes. That is controlled directly through the nervous system. Mm -hmm. So around all your capillary beds and your blood vessels, you have nerves. Right. You have sympathetic nerves that constrict your, your blood flow. Open it up. Constrict. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's the chicken or the egg. Is the blood more important or the, or the mental impulse is more important? And my whole point is, you can live, you're still alive, mm -hmm. if your heart stops. They can't use the resuscitation, right? The defib? Yeah. Defib doesn't work unless the brain is on. Think about it. Yes. Okay. Right. So, I say that so we understand that the brain or the nervous system is the most important. And because of that, the body has very specific defense mechanisms to protect that nervous system at all costs. Mm -hmm. Number one is your spinal curve. 60-60-60. Mm -hmm. That protects us against the forces of gravity. Mm -hmm. Second okay. defense kicks in. Muscular spasms. Mm -hmm. A muscle will spasm as a splinting or a protective mechanism. The third defense kicks in. The mm -hmm. ligamentous system. The function of the ligaments are to connect bones, right? Mm -hmm. The disc is considered the great ligament of the spine because it connects the two vertebrae. Fourth defense, disc. Yeah. The trauma, and this is where the Gonstead disc theory comes in. So let's talk about the Gonstead disc theory. Trauma initiates subluxation, dislodging the vertebrae off of its nucleus. When it's not sitting on its nucleus, this non-compressible material goes against the compressible annular fibers and it creates an inflammatory process because it's damaging a little bit of these fibers. This swelling is what irritates the nerve and causes nerve pressure. Inflammation of the disc mm -hmm. from misalignment of the bone mm -hmm. causes inflama uh, irritation to that nerve. So Gonstead's theory is this, and based on the, uh, let's look at the lumbar spine. There's only two to three degrees of motion. Mm. It has to first misalign posterior P. Mm. Then it can wedge to the side either way, the disc. Mm. Then it can rotate. So it's a three-dimensional misalignment. Mm. And the Gonset adjustment is a three-dimensional correction of that Cartesian coordinate system. Mm. That's your science. In the Gonset adjustment, you're going on the contact, I need you to see this real close. You're getting on the contact, you're lifting that vertebrae, and you're pushing it through the plane line of the disc. Okay? Mm. This way. If we're doing a finger push, it's this. So you know when I talk about the cobra? <laughs> this is the cobra, guys. I'm on the spinous, I'm lifting and pushing through. So it's a 3D. It's a 3D motion. Yes. Then this is the this is the most common error in the thoracic adjusting when you see these knife edge contacts. Mm. Because you have ribs here. Most if they're not see this is if we're doing it in the Gonstead work we're doing thenars. Yeah. And you're look watch watch come on this angle. Deco. I'm lifting an individual bone. I'm moving this bone. Mm. If I'm like this, you're just popping rib capsules. The last part of the defense. So, it, sorry, number four. Goes back, swells, eventually degenerates. Yeah. As it degenerates, we have disc degeneration. If we get lose less than one-third of the disc, kalas is done. If we have one-third of the disc or more, it can still rehydrate, regenerate. Mm. 
Okay. Final. So this, is, this is the disc. This is the disc. Yes. Okay. Final system: calcium and bone. They're still in stability. Loss of curve, muscle spasm, fatigue, ligaments got short. Disc wore out. Finally, calcium and bone. This is where osteoarthritis comes from. The beginning stages of arthritis. Osteo. Mm. Bony calcium and bone. It doesn't cause the pain. It just tells us there's been instability for so many years. Just two days ago, in this area, here. Okay. This Around T910, yeah. Yeah, T8. here, exactly. Right side. Just while I'm having my dinner, contracts. Was it spasming, pulsating, or was it just holding? No pulsating. Okay. Yeah. Just hold, but when I move, it's painful. Why don't we get started? Yes. Why don't we go over some of your x-rays, okay. let's see what's going on, All right. and uh, I'll talk a little bit more, and if you have questions on your x-rays, just ask. And the first thing we're going to talk about is let's look at this foundation, and what do we see? In the foundation, I'll go closer in here, but we can see a couple of things. We can see there's a little bit of a leg length inequality, your right hip is slightly, a little bit right. off. Yep. Right. And then you have your five goes up on the left. And then your four goes opposite, and it creates this slight curvature here. You see I that? I see, I see that. And this slight curvature, is, if we look here, creates an imbalance in your discs. This is level. You have a little bit of a curve in that bone there. It means you played hard. I know you played hard. Okay? So you got some pounding that we'll go over in a second. Let's start over here on this one. So what's interesting in your case is you have a short leg on your right. Your pelvis is up high on the left and it's turned slightly to the left side. This is your pubic bone, this is your, the crease of the bum. So your pelvis goes to the left. It's up on the left mm -hmm. and goes to the left side. It curves here on the short leg and then immediately compensates. So it's doing this. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. And your L5, you had some damage here because these ligaments here are starting to calcify, the iliolumbar ligaments and the iliosacrals. Mm -hmm. start, you have stiffness. I know you do. I'll show you when mm -hmm. I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> first we need to talk about your tailbone. And if we look at your tailbone here, check it out. It goes like this, and then it bends. All right, I see. So, let's go to this x-ray and see. And... You may have heard me talk about it. When we're looking at the tailbone here, it should be a smooth curve. You got one, two, three. You had three good tail falls on your tailbone minimum. All right. Okay. Yeah. Now, the idea is that the sacrum will ossify around 32 to 34. Mm -hmm. So you're right about there. Have I seen cases where you were able to help after? Sure. Yeah. But the point I'm making here is your imbalance started it from a tailbone injury. Mm. It could have been that 14 when you were 14. Yeah. Okay, the one you remember, it could have been before that. Mm -hmm. But that started the imbalance of your spine. Okay, so we have a tailbone injury. Then we have L5 out. And L5, you can see when we're looking at the nerve root exits, the IVF here, IVF here, you have scar tissue in there. So you did have inflammation, now there's a little bit of scar tissue. Mm. Okay, mm. follow my process. Yes. We have a tailbone injury with an L5. Your left pelvis, I said, goes up and in. When the pelvis goes up, the sacrum comes back. The AS causes the straightening of the spine. So your left pelvis goes up, causes a straightening of your spine. If it was too much curve, it would be more the PI. We have AS on the left, PI on the right. We have swelling in the left SI joint. So this is a tailbone injury is where I'm going to start with you. So we have a tailbone injury causing the imbalance. We have a left pelvis causing the straightening of the spine. When we start to look in his mid-back, we can see concavities of the thoracic bones. It means you played hard. You were playing a lot of sports or you are doing something. Right. Okay. And that's all fine, but then we have an issue here. And this is a little more serious. So this is T1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So right around this 6, 7 is in a line with, with 8, 8 is in a line with 9. You get this kink here, and you have a side slip at T5. 
this is the area that controls digestion. And when I look at your digestion, you have a lot of undigested food coming through. This is the ascending, transverse, descending colon. You have a lot of undigested food going through your colon. I see. So you're not absorbing and assimilating your nutrients as effectively or efficiently as you can, That's regardless true. of how clean you eat. Yes. Okay. Next part is here, T1, 2, 3, 4. We have, we're looking at a side slip at about 5. Four goes with it, three goes more side, two goes more side. So we have a lot of imbalance in the upper thoracic up here. Okay. And then you're playing on the, not playing, you're working on your phone and you're working and you're doing all this. And I know you're getting stuff in your upper back. Yeah. I know you do. Yeah. Okay. So that's all secondary to the foundation. So if you watch him walk, you'll see he doesn't have good movement in the dimple. He has a little bit. That right one doesn't move as well. And he kind of goes down on that right side when he walks. So the right shoulder comes back more than the left shoulder. You move your left shoulder more than you do your right. Now he's getting more in balance. Okay, good. Your right leg swings out more than your left, so your shoe is going to be worn out more on the back left side of your shoe. If you look at your shoes, yeah, it's worn out more on the back left heel. Worn? The wear yeah. is more wear on the back left shoe heel. Because back when you walk, left. you're walking on this part. Yeah. Uh, hey, huh? Yes. Okay. Okay? Okay. You can see it. You're pro. You're supinating out. Right. That's your left pelvis. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. You ready to get started? Have a seat, please. Now let's do the exam. And the first thing we're getting is C sixty seven. So it looked like it was. It looks like it's going left. But as I run it a few times, it's going to switch. So it didn't stop. And it goes all the way to C2 on the right. It looked like it was there, but it's not. Mm. 10 points, T6, left side. So that neck will need to be addressed at some point, but not today. 10 points, T6. Ten points, S3, S4. S3, S4, T6, C2. Those are the three pressures I'm finding. Let's check your hips, please. Scoot forward, feet together. Open and close your knees. Open and close. Right side only. Right side only. When he does the right, the left wants to go at the very end. Do the left side only, please. When he does the left, the right is fine. He's getting more movement up here from the scar tissue. Scoot back for me, please. Static palpation. Look, you can see the bumps, and then they disappear from the swelling, and then you can see them all the way here again. Wow. Seven, one, two, three, four, five. Wow. Right there. Oh. Six, right. actually it's seven. Eight, no. Seven, right. Right. Oh. six. Yes. Seven, six, yes. six. Yeah. That's your stomach button, sir. Yeah. T6. This is all good here. Now let's get to the foundation. Sit up straight. Back towards me, all the way back. Okay. L5. S1. S2. Tender, yeah? S3. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm finding it. And S4. Mm -hmm. S3 is, feels more swollen to me. S3 or S4? 
حضرت حضرت بده yeah s3 yeah. exactly oh s3 t6 s3 and now let's check the neck so seven six five four three two 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 on the left head down turn left turn right look up turn left turn right that's lower cervical is good this is going to be an issue later hmm. we're going to start on your you want to i'm going to follow my thought process for a second okay so i'm finding c2 hmm. t6 s3 yeah you ready Nice and easy. Relax the shoulders. Oh, that's a little bit. Gotcha. Oh. Let me go to the x-ray. T6 is a one, two, three, four, five, six. T6 is a PL. PLI. And what is a PLI? A PLI means it's posterior, mm. it's wedged on the right, and it's turned, the spinous is to the left, inferior of the wedge. So the contact is going to be the right transverse process to set it back in motion. PLI T6. One, two, three. PLI T6, we're on the transverse. There you go. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do a little more on the spinous now because there's not a lot of rotation there. You okay, sir? Yes. Two, three, four, five, six. And I want to get a little more set through. Oh, gotcha. Home run. And let's walk. Okay. As you're walking, let me know if anything is different. It doesn't matter good or bad. Yeah. I'm okay. You're good? Yes. I didn't touch your neck yet. Yeah. Have a seat over here. We're going to do your neck now. The neck is C2 is a PLS. So C2, this is two on three, it's posterior, it's left wedge, and it, the spinous is turned to the left. So we need to contact the left side of the spinous and we need to set it forward back on the disc. Okay. Okay, let's sit back for me please. And C2, it's gonna be very light. We're right on that C2 spinous. C2 is a bifid spinous, so we want to be on the left bifid. And it's not a hard set. We just want to set it up. Mm -hmm. Okay? Just mm -hmm. up. Hold on. Nice. Very nice. Bus. Love it. Walk it off one more time, please. Yes. tune with your body, you know what's going on. Yeah. I'm not talking too much, you know, I'm letting you kind of just experience it. Mm -hmm. Have a seat over here, let's reach you. I'm feeling more comfort here. Okay. Less yeah. tension? Less tension. And less energy to hold it? Yes. That's the basal metabolic rate we talk about. Now, starting at the base, C2 is clear, C7 is clear. <clears throat> so my job is to do what? Clear the spine. Yeah. 
Make sure the communication is clear. T6 is clear. Sacrum is clear. <laughs> Let me get a tiny bit more of that sacrum. I know it's clear. Yeah. I need a tiny bit of movement though. Okay. Let's go right side down. Relax there. Come forward. So now we can talk about the cobra. Yeah. You can't go back to Kuwait without the cobra. So we're right on the S3. Oh, oh boy! Oh. Wow, that was a release. <laughs> <laughs> Come on up. Wow. Good one. Walk it up. Sir. <sighs> yeah. That should be very different. Let's go on your back next. I want to work on your ankles. Just tune them up for you. Spraying both of these, okay? Deus talus, medial tilt. Deus talus, posterior fib. And we have a posterior tibia on this side. I'm on the back side. Tender. There you go. Sit up and, oh, hold on. Mm. You get a nose job today. Oh, really? Your septum. Okay. Do you have any breathing issues? You right. look congested. Yeah, this one. Can I check it for you? Yeah, Would sure. Would you like me to? Yeah, please. I've always noticed, you're right, I always noticed like one of, one of them, I don't really realize, but one of them is more, you said congested? Yes. More than the other. You have a little bit of a deviation of the septum, okay? I'm gonna okay. show you. Lift your head up and head down. Now, people think uh, I'm not cracking the nasal bone. What am I doing? The septum is a cartilaginous joint and it can, it can deviate. So I'm resetting it. And if you look at his nostrils, you can see one side is bigger than the other. It's very subtle. This is more oval in shape, this is more circular in shape. It's a little bit different. Mm. Chin down for me, please. Chin down. So when I push here, tender. When I push here, it's not so tender. So the deviation is actually on your left side, dude. <laughs> chin down, please. Chin down, down. Breathe through your mouth for a second. Bus. Oh. Nice. Open the jaw slowly. Open. Ah. The right side comes out first, the left side compensates. You see that? The right side pops out more. So we're going to set it back in, open all the way, open, 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 slowly start to close, bas, oh. that was crunchy dude. <laughs> mm. Sit up for me, now you get the buff and polish, yeah, relax there for a minute. Five, four, three, two, one. Vibration therapy breaks up scars.